GameMaker, along with other programming languages, comes equipped with many kinds of loops. A loop is something that will execute code within one step and then do it a certain amount of times. Loops are a great way to get a lot of things done with just a few lines of code. The first loop I'll go over is repeat. This is a really simple loop. Here's how it's written. You'll write the word repeat, and then in parentheses, you put in a number that will represent how many times you want this code block to repeat. Then in between braces, you write your code. Here I've just written a variable called count, and I'm going to increase its value by one every single time it repeats. So for this example, my count will increase by one 10 times. Something to keep in mind about loops though, is that your code will hop inside that code block and bounce around until it's able to come out. In this case with repeat, the computer won't come out of this loop until it's executed this code 10 times. Let's say you have to write something multiple times. We can use the function draw text, and then inside parentheses, we tell the computer where we want the text to be written. Let's say we want it written wherever we put the object. So we want it at its x value, at its y value, and we want it to print out the string hello. Then we want it to do it on the next line. Now we'll say our lines are 16 pixels apart. We could then write draw text, at our x value, and then y plus 16, and then hello again. And then we can write it again with 32, and we can write it again with 48. But as you can see, this is repetitive, and we don't want to do that. We invented computers to do repetitive tasks for us. This is where a loop will come in handy. So first let's establish a variable called i, that'll stand for integer in this case, and we'll make it equal zero. Then we'll write down our repeat loop, and we'll have this happen eight times. So GameMaker will hop inside this code block for repeat, it'll get to the line that says draw text, and it'll write it at x, y plus i, and it'll write hello. So if you remember, right now i equals zero. So wherever our y is, we're not gonna change it because we're adding zero. Then i will plus equal cell size. So if you remember, we made a constant called cell size and it equals 16. So now our i variable equals 16. Game Maker will jump to the top of the loop. Notice that repeat needs to happen seven more times and it'll do it again. So it'll draw text at our x value and y will now equal wherever we are plus 16, and we write hello again. Then i will increase itself by cell size again, which is 16, which means i now equals 32. And it'll keep doing this until it's done it eight times. So within one step of our game, we've written the word hello eight times with a spacing of 16 pixels. And we only had to write maybe four or five lines of code. That's the strength of a loop. Just remember that GameMaker and all computer programs will get stuck inside a loop until it leaves, which means your program will not do anything else until the loop is done. I'll tell you why that's important in a second. Another type of loop is called while. This checks some sort of condition, and while that condition is true or false or whatever the condition may be, the code inside the block will execute. For something a little abstract, let's just go with while tired is true, then sleep equals true. Now the most important thing to understand about loops is they have to somehow terminate. If they don't terminate, your game is going to freeze, because it's just going to get trapped inside that loop and do it forever. So with this particular example, if true never becomes false, then this while loop will just keep executing. So here's a more complex version of it. We have while tired is true, sleep will equal true, but then our fatigue level will minus equal 1. So it'll drop, it'll decrement by 1. Then we create an if statement, and we say if fatigue is equal to zero, remember double equal is to check a value, rather than assign a value, we hop into that code block, and tired equals false. So our program will keep running inside of here as long as tired is true, but our fatigue level will keep dropping by one until it's zero. Because once it's zero, tired is false, and if tired is false, this while loop doesn't happen anymore. So we've made a way for this loop to terminate. That's important, because we don't want our games to freeze. A more practical example for video games is something like this. This while loop says, while not, remember the exclamation mark is not, place empty at x and y. So that's right where I am right now, at my x value and my y value, if the place is not empty. That means if I'm colliding with something. Okay, so I'm overlapping something. Well, what do we do? 
hop inside this code block I've written. And what I wrote is that my x value will now equal some sort of random number. Random is a function that will select a number anywhere between 0 and the number you put within the parentheses. In this case, I just chose my entire room width. Whatever that is, that could be 480, it could be 1280, whatever the room width is. And I've done the same with Y, just with the room height. So GameMaker will get to this. If I'm colliding with something because my place is not empty, then I select a new random location and check again. This code will just keep executing itself, randomly placing me around the room until I'm not colliding with something. Then GameMaker will hop out of this loop and continue with the rest of your code. And then a step will elapse. The third kind of loop is called a do loop. It'll do something until something happens. Here's an example. I've written do, and then in a code block I've written x plus equals 1. GameMaker will keep looping my x position and increasing it by 1 until something happens. I've written until not place empty one pixel in front of my x. So what this means is that GameMaker Behind the scenes, within just one step, so the player won't see this happen, but behind the scenes, my object will keep moving to the right by one pixel, until one pixel in front of me is not empty. So if one pixel ahead of me, I would collide with something. As you can see, do until is kind of like a while loop in reverse. Something will still loop until something is no longer true or false or whatever the condition is. The fourth and final loop I want to show you is a for loop. These are my favorite loops. There's a lot of power to a for loop, and you have to write it very differently from the rest of the loops. A for loop is written like this. We write the word for, and then there are three sections inside the parentheses. The first one will initialize the loop with some sort of variable. Here I've got i again, and I'm still making it equal zero. So we've initialized i as zero. Then you write a semicolon, of course to tell GameMaker that your statement is done, and we write a new statement. This will be what determines if the loop will keep going. For this statement, I've written i is less than 10. So as long as i is less than 10, this loop will happen. Then we put another semicolon, and then we create some sort of increment or step or, or condition that will happen once we complete this loop. And in this case, I'm saying my i value will increment by one. So far you can tell this is just a really complicated version of repeat 10 times, because that's what's going to happen. i will start at 0, be less than 10, and then increment by 1 every time the code happens, until it happens 10 times. But the real power comes from the variable you've created in the initialize section. That variable is i. Now of course with this example all I'm doing is saying count plus equals 1. whoop de doo But if I show you this example, still only takes up three lines of code. But what I've written is for i equals zero, we're starting our variable at zero, and if that variable is less than 10, we're gonna do this loop. And when it's done, we're gonna increment it by one. Inside this code block, I've written that an array I have at position i, which starts at zero, will equal cell size times i. So you're like, whoa, that's a lot of code, but let's just break it down. Right now we know i equals 0, so just like algebra, let's plug that in. We can see that array 0 equals, and if you remember our cell size constant equals 16, we have 16 times 0. So the first time this for loop happens, array 0 will equal 0. Now i will increment by 1. Now let's do it again and plug in the number 1, where each i occurs. So it says array 1 equals 16 times 1. So the value is 16. And we'll do it again with 2. So array 2 equals 16 times 2. That equals 32. And we'll do array 3. And that equals 16 times 3, or 48. And this will happen 10 times. So with just three lines of code, we've created an array that has a size of 10. And inside each one, we start at 0 and increment by 16. This could be great for plotting out coordinates. So that's the true power of a loop. Anytime you have to write something repetitively over and over again, all you have to do is throw it into a loop. But beware that your loop has to terminate somehow, or else your computer is just going to get stuck inside that loop and your game will freeze. <laughs>